My name is Rachel Kobe, and I was in a group with Sarah Vanderwerf and McKenna Gorslin, and we did our presentation on lung cancer. So lung cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the lungs, and it is the leading <coughs> cause of cancer deaths worldwide. The greatest risk is in those who smoke, but it can also develop in people who have never smoked. <coughs> and your risk of developing lung cancer increases <coughs> with the length of time you've smoked and the number of <coughs> cigarettes you've smoked. Smoking causes a majority of lung cancer, both in those who smoke and those who have been exposed to a lot of secondhand smoke. Smoking damages the cells that line the lungs, and when you inhale cigarette smoke, you also inhale a lot of cancer-causing substances called carcinogens, and changes in your lung tissue begin almost immediately with that. At first, your body is able to repair that damage, but with each repeated exposure, your lung cells become more and more damaged, and over time, the damaged cells will begin to act abnormally, and that's when the cancer may develop. Other than smoking, some other causes include previous radiation therapy, exposure to radon gas, exposure to asbestos and other carcinogens, and then a family history of lung cancer. Um, for symptoms and assessments, usually you don't display any symptoms until the cancer is in a more advanced stage, but if you do start showing symptoms, they may include a persistent cough that doesn't go away, coughing of blood even in a pretty small amount, shortness of breath, chest pain, a hoarse voice, losing weight without trying, bone pain, and a headache. Assessments include a personal history like asking questions about if they smoke, how much they smoke, how long they've smoked for, if they live with somebody who smokes or something like that, and if they have a history of lung cancer. And then next would be a physical exam, and in this they're going to listen for any abnormalities in the lung sounds and just try to do an overall assessment of the health of the lungs. And if your doctor has any suspicion that lung cancer may be the cause of your symptoms, you're most likely going to need to undergo some more tests just so they can confirm the diagnosis. Some of these tests include imaging tests like an x-ray of the lungs, which are going to reveal any abnormal masses or nodules in the lungs and then a CT scan which can reveal damaged tissue in the lungs that might not be able to be detected in an x-ray. The next would be a sputum cytology and this is where they're going to look at sputum under a microscope which can reveal some presence of any lung cancer cells. And then lastly would be a tissue sample or biopsy and this is where they're going to remove a sample of the abnormal cells and then test them for the presence of cancer. After you've been diagnosed, your doctor is going to determine the stage of your cancer so that they can develop the proper treatment plan. Depending on the severity, there are a few common ways that lung cancer is treated. <coughs> First would be surgery, and this is where the lung cancer will be removed along with a margin of the healthy tissue surrounding the cancerous area. And during surgery, your surgeon will most likely also remove lymph nodes from your chest just to make sure that the cancer isn't spreading but surgery is usually only used if the cancer is confined to the lungs. Next is radiation therapy, and this is where high-powered energy beams from sources like x-rays or protons are used to kill the cancer cells. And this is often used along with chemotherapy and is sometimes done before surgery. Next is chemotherapy, and that's where drugs are used to kill the cancer cells. This is often used after surgery to kill any cancer cells that might still be there or before surgery to shrink the cancer cells to make them easier to remove. Next is targeted drug therapy and that focuses on specific abnormalities present within the cancer cells and targets those abnormalities in order to kill them. And lastly is immunotherapy and that's where you, they use your immune system to fight the cancer itself. For prognosis and follow-up, the prognosis really depends on the type and severity of lung cancer that you have. So the five-year survival rate for lung cancer is around 56% in cases where the cancer is just localized in the lungs. So follow-up visits are usually every three months for the first couple of years after treatment, then it slows down to six months for a few years after that. And then as long as everything is continuing to look good, it'll slow down to just yearly visits and routine checkups. So for the PSA portion, first of all, don't smoke. And if you've never smoked, don't start smoking. If you do smoke, stop smoking now and talk to your doctor about strategies and aids that can help you quit. 
If you quit smoking, even if you've been smoking for a few years, you can significantly reduce your chances of developing a form of lung cancer. Next is avoid secondhand smoke. If you live or work with somebody who smokes, you should urge them to quit, and at the very least, ask them to smoke outside or not around you. Next, um, test your home for radon, because as radon decays, it gives off tiny radioactive particles, and when these particles are inhaled, the particles can damage the cells that line the lungs, which can lead to lung cancer if they're inhaled for a very long period of time. And then lastly, if you're at an increased risk of developing lung cancer, get annual lung cancer screenings. So these screenings are usually offered to older adults who have smoked heavily for a number of years or who have quit smoking in the past 15 years. Um, the key to surviving lung cancer is to catch it in its earliest stages when it's the most treatable <coughs> because lung cancer caught in its early stage can have a cure rate as high as 80 to 90 percent. So I got all my information from the Mayo Clinic, so if you have any more questions, you can ask me or you can check out that source.